Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Cutts, and you're watching my video on a Straumann tissue level implant placement with a simultaneous sinus lift procedure. So here we start by evaluating the site, which we've already done with a 3D CT scan. And then we make a mid crestal incision to start gaining access to the alveolar bone. We start reflecting the tissues. We try and reflect with clean periosteum as much as we can. You can see remnants of scar tissue buccally there from the historic extraction. And do a small little, in this situation, distal relieving incision. And just kind of almost blunt dissect the periosteum to just allow a bit more periosteal release. And then we make a, a mesial relieving incision on the mesial of the, the tooth in front. And just full thickness. And then again, just try and dissect out the tissues using sometimes the back of the, the scalpel or a boozer elevator. And just on the buckle window there, we can see a little bit of residual GP from the, the old extraction. And here we go, we start by uh, creating our buckle window using a piezo surgery, just a little round diamond piezo surgery burr to re remove atraumatically the thin buckle bone. I try and keep the windows nice and small. I only want to elevate the sinus just large enough to support our implant, avoiding sometimes some large vessels and eventually we can see that we've got the buckle window mobilized and that small piece of buckle bone and here's my series of sinus instruments which are round-ended smooth-ended so that we don't have any any nicks on them that could maybe tear a thin membrane and we just gently keep the tip of the instrument up against the inside of the alveolar bone so that we use the heel of the instrument to push and elevate the sinus lining. And once we're happy that we've elevated the lining enough, mobilized it, we can start our osteotomy site with our twist drill series. And so then that's that's our first 2.2 millimeter direction indicator going in place. And it's uh, we're gonna put a 10 millimeter implant in this site, I think. Then we can see the buckle, buckle deficiency where it's resorbed. And then we go through our twist drill process. So this is the 2.8. And there's only a residual height of, I think three to four millimeters of crestal bone. I try and leave the bony fragments within the sinus window. There's our direction indicator. And then the 3.8 twist drill. Again, being careful not to kind of engage the lining, not to tear it or perforate it. And then we have our, our flare, our profile burr, for the tissue level implant. We can see we created our osteotomy. That is very quick, nice and neat. There's our tissue level implant, which I love. And just start, I always try and place these by hand so you get a feel for primary stability rather than using a machine. And we can just use the neck of the implant to help aid in primary stability. Being sure to get the indexing correct. Pop a little cover screw on. Just to help with primary closure. And then we check for passivity of the flap. And then just gonna pack the window buckley. Sometimes you can pre-pack the window before you place the implant to ensure you get good material going palatal to the implant fixture. 
in this situation I was quite comfortable and I just put the fixture in and then I'm going to pack around the implant and we'll just really pack a lot as much as we possibly can of cerebone which is a botus biomaterial it's a xenograph bovine in origin fantastic for this situation a long-term material very low substitution rate and then just try in the adjacent membrane which is the porcine membrane and we can trim it to length and shape obviously it's never that easy with curved scissors but uh, and I just like to bevel it and then I wet it just to aid kind of malleability pop that over the window sometimes you can use little titanium tacks to keep it in place downside to that is you have to sometimes remove them so if you can tuck it under the periosteum and you can get it stable you don't need to, which I felt I could in this situation. And then in this case, I think I did a, a mattress suture, a part non-locking and a part locking. That's just gonna approximate the flap nicely. And see, it just comes together well. So just cut the tail and then start the mattress. There we go. So that's the that's the tail end, so to speak. So we can see that that's closed together nicely, and then we just have to close the relieving incisions. In this type of flap design, I like to close the crestal incision first and then come back and do the relieving incisions especially when you're advancing a flap quite a bit just another little simple interrupted just on the mesial of that five My assistant always just cuts the tails. And a final little interrupted suture. Just closing together nicely. There we go, and we can see that the fixture's closed over. We have no biomaterial coming through or any membrane exposure. Good 